do something. Oh, it's missing. It's missing some stuff. Yeah, I'm hearing echo bits from Yobe's computer. Need to... Well, tell them to use headphones when he comes back. Uh... <laughs> Oh, it's not activated. Okay. What about now? Should already be on Twitch and on YouTube. Just double check. Just trying to make it work on uh, Facebook as well. Yeah, we're already on Twitch. So that's good. Why isn't it working on Facebook? Hmm. It's activated. And it's the wrong key. Okay, that explains it. YouTube? <coughs> this... Oh, I'm on the wrong thing. Okay, I see it now. Video streams. Okay, I'm on the wrong one. That makes that makes sense. Uh, republishing, edit this one. Save republisher. Activate. Yes. Set live. Yes. Okay, now it should work. Okay, go live. Okay, should be live on all platforms now. World okay. domination is ready. And the demo that we're watching right now was a promised demo that I, I, I promised one of our viewers to watch. It was released at the Swedish Retro Gaming Party. Retro Party Renders 2018. And it's mostly... Uh, I think it's rendered. But it uses, uh, what was it that it used? Unity to do the render, the the 3D scenes. But then it rendered. I think it's rendered. It might be real time. I'm not sure. Retro party. Anyways, it's good to see new people in Sweden doing stuff. Uh, should be made open. I should probably spam this. Come on. Okay, spamming through the internet. Um, somebody on Twitter, somebody on Twitch. It's missing facepalm. Share the page.
LS Mushroom, how are you doing, man? Welcome to the chat. Facebook. Don't you guys hate Facebook? I fucking hate Facebook. Like it takes forever to do something, and then when you're trying to click it, it changes the page, and you click on the wrong place. Oh my god. Okay, I'm gonna give up on Facebook. I give up on trying to share this on Facebook. Um, anyways, let's play some classics. We have this one from the Atari scene, which I slightly stole from Exocet's Coupe de Coeur list. So I, I assume that you like it, Exocet. It's a, it's a good one. Yeah. By Dune and Sector 1. Has Glenn's vectors, so it must be awesome. Winter Tail. Fantasia. I think I've seen this before already. I'm trying to figure out what to do, like, special um, for revision, like, in terms of some sort of video report. It's a bit lame to just, you know, do the random interviews with people, so I'm trying to figure out what I could do, like, what questions I can ask people to make it interesting. So maybe reviving the, the old shards idea that we used to ask people what is the favorite demo of all time, stuff like that. I'm not sure how that will work. So, I don't know, if anyone has any ideas, I'm open to suggestions. Hello, Procyon. Hello, Adam. Hello, Gravisus. Welcome to the stream. Should be starting officially in about eight minutes. Have the names wrong here. Try to fix that. Missing the audience. I guess they're all doing the productions for revision. Yeah. Oh, really? yes. we should too. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, there's at least a bunch of uh, people in Helsinki at uh, Scanner Club been having a last minute uh, demo making get together. Hmm. Like to a sprint. Finish everything that should already be finished by now. <laughs> Definitely. Yeah. 
Hey Evil, how you doing man? Welcome to the stream. Artists have been lazy, don't know if the DS demo will be finished in time. Are you doing a Nintendo DS demo for us, Yon? It's the usual problem. Always blame it on the Graphician. <laughs> Welcome to the inner machiner of Fantasia. <laughs> Should we continue or cancel the demo conversation? Yeah, that's always the hard conversation to have. But if you have the code all finished, you can always do some extra polishing while you wait for the 3D. <laughs> Glenn's Vector Reflections. It's very dominant in white percent. Yeah, really is first fix later. So these demos they use uh, some tricks so most of the images they have use more than 16 colors. It's gonna be up. That's in the use some black spectrum and flash drive, so display <laughs> 15 seconds of content, yeah, that's not much for a demo. I mean, there were shorter demos than that before. But you probably want to do a few more seconds, that is. You've been washing Fantasia. The little fish are so cute. Okay, I guess I'm gonna skip the credits. If you guys hear some sounds, some background sounds, it's it's the revision organizing crew. They're having a party at the uh, at the VIP lounge. Yeah. <laughs> it's all normal. It's part of the revision experience. Yeah, Gasman, maybe I'll ask you to uh, mute while they're not speaking, just so we can... Uh, uh, yeah. Don't forget to unmute when you need to speak. <laughs> just a minute to the official start. I think we'll still play one more demo after this one. Actually, no, we can't because it's a rather long one, so I might save it for later. This one is a Metamorph by Satori, one of the old demos that he used to make more experimental stuff back in the 90s, I believe. Probably 99? I'm not sure. Let me check. Yeah, 2000 actually. Yeah. Said Fiasco 2000. Hey, Sense and Style, how are you doing? Welcome to the live stream. You're just in time. We're about to start.
Okay, so it's 7 p.m. officially, at least in Portugal and in the UK probably as well, if uh, summertime hasn't screwed up our plans once again. So welcome everyone to Mystery Devil Scene Theater 9000 Season 4, Episode 4. I have with me today uh, three guests, all of them uh, somehow tinkering with uh, old school or new old, new retro old school platforms, whatever you can call the pick away thing. So I have with me Exoset of uh, Just For Fun and I, I don't know how many other groups you're in, but probably like four or five. Uh, yeah, a few. Uh, but yeah, hello everyone. Nice to be here. Uh, we also have Yobe, who has been doing some awesome stuff on the Pico 8 lately. He's mostly under Yuma Lauta, but also Matt Curant and a few other groups. Yeah. And Gasman, you guys already know them. Oh. Uh, from uh, 500 other groups as well. Hui Program, yeah. Raw Ars, and uh, yeah. on and on. Uh, stuff like yeah, that. Pretty much, yeah. So, uh, Gasma is actually live from Revision. He's uh, He yeah. helps organize the old school combo, I believe. So he's helping set up the place. Yeah, uh, yeah. So yeah, it's probably uh, thought you've just had some sort of badly timed stuff come. So uh, yeah, but so uh, might be some background noise there. But yeah, it's, uh, I'm kind of kicking off at the moment and organising in, in the build up. But uh, yeah, exciting to be here. Yeah. And we're revision is starting in a couple of days, so it's the big party that every, everyone wants to attend. Uh, so looking forward. I already have my plane. Actually, I ha there's this like gas provider strike in Portugal, so I don't know if I will have gas to catch my plane to go to revision. But I hope it's it's I hope it's not an issue. We'll have to wait and see. Anyways, uh, this show we're gonna be covering demos from the previous month of uh, 2018. Uh, but first up, we're gonna uh, talk a little bit with Exoset about uh, how he got into the demo scene and uh, some demos. He, he participated in a few demos that were released on this previous month, and that's why he's a guest on the show today. So the first demo we have to take a look at from Exoset's uh, huge back catalog of demos. It's this one that was released for Saturn in. So Exoset, tell us what, what what can you tell us about this little production that you did? How did you get into the demo scene? Tell us all about the story of you and the demo scene. Yeah, I try to do my best. It's uh fairly old now, I think nearly 25 years old. But but yeah, I mean I was uh, I think I studied I had a, a good friend in primary school who was uh, his dad as a uh, there are tons of cracked games with crack trolls. So uh, uh, yeah, we really were very, very uh, fascinated by those crack shows before games. Mm -hmm. And uh, a few years later, we uh, we all got PCs and we, we wanted to be creative with them. And we got those uh, intro makers, like TAG intro makers. I don't know if you know this one. <laughs> yeah. Like from, yeah. I mean, I think all <laughs> the kids tend to use that back in the day. So yeah. You, you were able to make very simple crack shows with. Uh, Without any code, mm -hmm. so we, we did this for a while, and then we tried other, other stuff. On the, on the, and it was it, all of this was was pre-internet, so we had zero contact with anyone on the actual demo scene or crack scene. So, what was um, your actually first demo party? It was in uh, I think '95, '96, mm -hmm. probably one of the, the Saturn party in France. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, what happened uh, a few years later? I joined the. I joined some group, so we had those magazines in France who, who had demos on them regularly, and they also had uh, uh, classifieds, and people were looking for for, for groups, for mm. member for the, the group. So we, uh, uh, a few friends of, of mine, we, we got in touch with uh, with uh, someone from from just for fun who was living nearby and he was looking for members. So we, we sent uh, letters in the post with a floppy disk with a, <laughs> the <laughs> very bad stuff we were doing at the time. And he replied a few weeks later, and we were in the group, and we started this way. <laughs> okay, so you started in the Atari ST. There were a lot of uh, French activity on the Atari ST uh, at the time, and it kind of still seems to exist. Do you still keep track of the Atari ST scene? Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm really interested in to. I mean, that's that's one of the, the scenes I'm the most active in. Mm -hmm. So it's still still quite uh, quite dynamic, and uh, still quite a few. French guy active on, on that and on the the big big party for 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 Atari and the ST in particular is uh, is um, City Venture in, in November December. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. It's been every year for, I guess, quite a long time. And, and then there's always like some very good demos released. So short trip two. I'm not sure if that was for City Ventures. I can't remember. I can um, yeah, I'll check as well. Short trip to Outline. First at Outline 2009. So it was Outline. Uh, so yeah, it was... Um, yeah, Outline also has a very strong uh, Atari scene there, uh, so uh, it's 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 uh, normal. Uh, what can you tell us about this demo in particular? Did you do? Were you very involved in it? Did you just supply some graphics. Can you tell us anything about that? Yeah, I wasn't super involved. I mean, I was working with um, uh, Dev Jam, mm -hmm. and he's, uh, he's he's quite uh, independent the way he works. So he knows what he wants to do. I mean, just he just ask for a few. Um, images or, or assets needs mm -hmm. everything together sometimes is uh yeah it's not the best design but, but i mean <laughs> the, on the cut side you have to you have to to agree that is a is really good i mean it's, it's one of the top color on, on on the st definitely mm -hmm. very uh yeah, very powerful stuff very very heavy 3d stuff uh yeah definitely very new school as well for the st on, the, on this one is uh, yeah it was it was one of the the big checkpoint demo of, of those times. Okay, uh, what is the demo that you did that you are most proud of? It's uh, a good question. Uh, I think one of the demo um, I wasn't a big part of it, but I think it's the best one I worked on is uh, the demo from Sector One. Uh, I forgot the name of course. <laughs> uh, let's check. Checking your list, odd stuff maybe. Odd stuff, yeah, that's, that's it. Yeah, okay. it, it's really good. I mean, it, it was super polished, and uh, very good design for, especially for the ST. Where the design is not always same level as an Amiga, but it was, yeah, it was, it was super nice. And it's, it's still like it has an edge at all. It still looks super cool, very entertaining to watch, and, and very well designed. Like it's, it's never boring. Always look good. So yeah, this is this demo. I'm very happy to. To, uh, to have had the, the chance to work on it. I'll show this one as well while we're at it. It's a bit long though, 13 minutes. Yeah, I think it's mostly the, the scroll text at the end is like mm. more than five minutes. Okay. Let's skip a little bit. So uh, what is the official groups that you're in? Is it just for fun and what else? What other groups? It's approve. Approve? I don't think I ever um, heard of that. It's just on Atari? A prof on Amiga. Okay, okay. That that explains. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm more of a PC person, so okay, I don't know. I, the, I don't know the other groups. Hmm. On the space balls, but I'm, I'm not. I'm not very active in them. <laughs> space balls is a very long list. I didn't know you were in space balls. That's a very. Yeah, I didn't do much. So. <laughs> were they mostly just uh, Norwegian? I guess I guess they have uh, a French division as well. Yeah, they used to have uh, a few French members in there. In the 90s but yeah it's, it's mostly i mean those days it's mostly slummy basically mm -hmm. yeah Let's skip this scene some glens vector stuff so uh do you prefer to do old school stuff or uh or is just what usually people because i know you mostly for doing pixel art stuff are you mostly just focused on pixel art or yeah it's mostly what i want to do uh, i've been doing this for many years and uh, yeah that's why i enjoy to, to do the most and, i mean i, I do like uh, working games so i do i don't do pixel art for games but mm -hmm. i do modern stuff but I, in my spare time i really enjoy pixel art the most because it's it's more i think it's quite relaxing to do mm -hmm. it can be very expressive as well yeah yeah yeah, yeah. It's good. also i've done some uh, bit of 3d recently for some uh, Demos, I think we'll uh, be later. We'll watch uh, that mega oh, the one demo from Remote. Yeah, I, I have that listed. Uh, anyways, I, there was this demo in particular that I saw in your list that I, I thought it was a bit funny Thunderdome the demo. So, what can you tell? I well, obviously, it's a reference to those compilation discs of uh. Gabber hardcore, whatever you call that yeah. kind of music. So, were you like heavily uh, influenced by making this? How much a part of this demo were you? What can you tell us about this demo? 
No, again, it's uh, it's really from uh, from Def Jam. So I think he's really into that kind of, of music, all the hardcore stuff. I mean, he's German, so he's big in Germany. Uh, but no, I, I wasn't I wasn't too involved. I mean, he, he came to me. He said, I'm working on the demo. It's it's uh, uh, it's based on on, on Thunderdome, and we need some art for it. So I mostly <laughs> did uh, the Swedish stuff. I think I say actually only Swedish stuff. Mm-hmm. Which was a good challenge because I, I never done 3D for the texture 3D for for the ST, which is quite rare. So as you can imagine, it's like very um, heavy constraints for polycon for texture size. So it was, it was a good good challenge. It was very interesting. And, uh, I think it it worked very well in the demo. <laughs> I think that the first part, I think the music is uh, yeah, it's, it's like mostly sample from some. And then dumb stuff, I think. So it gets, because I think it's a quite short sample, so it gets repetitive quickly. So the music in second part is, is, is quite amazing. It's always important to have more Gabber in your world. And I I hear that uh, Boozembly is going to have another uh, Boozembly hardcore thing. <laughs> You're nodding, Jobit, so do you know any information about this? Uh, I'm All I know this is that it's coming and it's going to be. Uh, as far as I know, pretty much the same concept as uh, the first time. So there's probably going to be, I think, a, a, a cassette release of all yeah. the uh, top 10 entries. <laughs> Very nice. And, and you should all enter the combo because it's the best music combo of the year. <laughs> Obviously. <laughs> Anyways, moving on. Uh, this is a very, uh, very the, recent... The on, the, on the demo before, it was... It was uh... Oh, I didn't get to show it. I'm, I'm, I, I apologize. Uh, this one is a more recent demo. It was released uh, last month, and it was actually for the Mega Drive. Um, it was coded by Kabuto. It has sound by Remute and graphics from from Exoset here. So this is, was like to promote uh, an album release from Remote. Is this correct? Yeah, correct. So Remote he had that, that idea of making. Uh... An album uh, on, on a cartridge for, for Mega Drive, and then uh, he, uh, he wanted to have some uh, video clip to, to go to run the, on the cartridge as well. And so he contacted David uh, Kabuto and myself, mm-hmm. asked us if we interested to do uh, like a small demo animation stuff for like three minutes long. And uh, really, like we had carte blanche, so it was, it was really interesting because it was really up to us what we wanted to do. As long as it's, it's matched uh, with the, the, the visual somehow, or the sound yeah, somehow. Yeah, the, I mean. the vision that Remute had for this album is like quite like yeah, futuristic. Mm-hmm. So it was it was very new for me because uh, it was quite specific the, the constraints we had for for the, the 3D on the Mega Drive. Uh, so it was a bit of uh, trial and error initially, try to understand what we could do, what we couldn't do. Mm-hmm. Well, in the end, it worked quite well. I think uh, we did that, that small uh, There was already movie. some 3D on that previous uh, demo by... Well, I'm forgetting the name of the group. Uh, the one that was Titan. very... Titan, huh? Yeah, the, the one that was very famous. Overdrive 2 by, by Titan. I think Kabuto was involved on that as well, wasn't he? Yeah, I think it was, it was a main, uh, main programmer for, for it, on the, especially for the 3D part. Mm-hmm. So he actually uh, he, he used that as, as a base and then he optimized it even further. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, that, that's. So I was very impressed because I did not know what to expect for, for the frame rate. Uh, and actually, it's 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 really good in the in the demo. Like, yeah, this looks pretty good. Of, I mean, I, if you don't understand that the Mega Drive can do 3D, this is not that interesting. But when you once you know those limitations, this is this is pretty intense shit. Yeah, I mean it's not really really 3D. It's more like a 2D. Polygon filler, but it's still super impressive. I mean, uh, Kabuto wrote, wrote, wrote down uh, a long document about all the stuff he. Yeah, he I saw a write up. Yeah, it's very impressive. It's like super advanced uh, Mega Drive stuff. Um, I mean, I'm curious yeah. what people can do with a Mega Drive more. I mean, we seem to have already explored so much of the limits. And I, I heard that the guys from Titan didn't want to do any other Mega Drive projects after that, so I'm curious how, how things will evolve that department anyways uh more demos from uh, that were recently released uh this one is called yofar it was released at let me check out the name so i know exactly what i'm talking about 
at GURP. It got first place at the old school demo couple. GURP is a Swedish demo party. And it's curious that we see Spectrum uh, releases at at uh, Swedish demo party because usually we don't see them much. So, Gazman, you're our Spectrum uh, expert. What can you tell us about this demo? Have you seen yeah. it before? Um, well, I, I think uh, you can uh, you can blame uh, sort of Shadow uh, for for this. A uh, sort of serial sort of platform hoarder. So I think he's yeah. Uh, so, so yeah, and obviously he's uh, partnered up with uh, Yejme in his very uh, recognisable musical style. And uh, but yeah, it's, so it's uh, yeah, obviously yeah, the, obviously yeah, the spectrum was kind of yeah, big in the sort of UK and Central Europe, and yeah, not not so much Scandinavia and uh, the rest of Western Europe, but. Uh, yeah, so when you've got someone who's sort of enthusiastic about uh, mastering every platform in the world, then yeah, it can uh, <laughs> expand past those borders as well. Yeah. yeah, that's pretty much how Shadow is known, is for having done yeah. so many demos in different platforms. You check yeah. his list of demos on, on, on the yeah. demos who are poo at, and it's yeah. just, it's ridiculous. Yeah. Actually, now I think about it, there was, uh, on the really early days of the demo scene, I think there were, there were a couple of uh, Swedish Spectrum groups. Uh, Cast a Cracking Group was uh, really? one of them. And I think, uh, and actually, the, the, the guy um, behind that group, he, he uh, sort of returned sort of pretty recently after. So he, I think he probably has the record for the longest hiatus between. Uh, between releases, so that was like 1986, 87, and then yeah, just uh, reappeared a few years back with more Spectrum demos. So uh, okay, pretty neat. What, well, yeah. what group? Can you say the name again? It was a Caster Cracking Group. Caster Cracking and, uh, Group. Okay. Yeah. CCG then. Okay. Yeah. I, I'm not sure I have seen their demos, but I'll, I'm gonna take a look. Yeah. After the show. Yeah, well, yeah, it was, um, well, the, the early ones were, sort of, as you'd expect, kind of uh, one screen ripped music. But uh, mm -hmm. yeah, they, yeah, the they later ones, uh, some uh, interesting effects in there. Yeah. <laughs> uh, OK, moving on, we have another entry from GURP. This was the winning Amiga entry, and it's an invitation for uh, for a party called Summer Hack. In 2019, this won the Demo Compo and it's made by the Dead Hacker Society. And I, Exocet, I think you did something for this as well. So you have like a logo on it. You're muted, by the way. You should unmute yourself. Yeah, I was just saying it's, uh, it's some super logo I did a long time ago. Uh, it just, yeah, I think uh, either I probably need a logo for this demo and it just had this one and install went for it but, but yeah it's, it's very nice very nice demo I mean, dhs is is very good always yeah it looks and very clean, clean like the whole demo very sleek mm -hmm. yeah okay music by speechless Let's see what has what else we have in store uh the next one i think it's from another party we have not curb any longer so i'm gonna start playing that one is called punkation by dentifric or dentifrice i don't know how you're supposed Dentifrice. to say it dentifrice. Dentifrice. Uh, so what can you tell us about this one it's for the commodore 64 apparently yeah so it's another uh, so remd and uh, kazakh so of, of dentifrice uh, they used to be uh, active uh, 20 years ago on the PC, and then recently they decided they wanted to get back into the demo scene. So they, they did uh, a few uh, releases for the Atari VCS, mm -hmm. which is pretty impressive. Uh, and then recently, Randy decided they wanted to do some C64 stuff as well. So uh, that's the first, the first C64 production, so quite a good start. And, um, that's their uh, first 64 C64 production ever, from them. Yeah, 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 yeah. And, uh, it's, it's amazing how people still are learning old platforms nowadays. It's interesting, and they're, they're really because yeah, they, they started again from the VCS, and now they get something a bit better. So it's mm -hmm. interesting. Uh, and, uh, and yeah, I worked a bit on this one, but uh, the, the, the animation, the, the guy in the background, actually is something I did for initially for one of the demo on the VCS. Mm -hmm. So the the repurposed it for for this demo. Uh, I wasn't able to help them as much as I wanted because I was pretty busy when they were working on that. I was trying to finish uh, that Mega Drive demo, 
which had a hard deadline when I was on holiday at the same time as well. So it was it was a bit tricky. So I wasn't able to to provide uh, them with as much uh, art as they wanted. So hopefully mm -hmm. the next demo we'll have more time. And uh, I think they I know they want to to work on a, on a bigger uh, C64 demo soon. So I think it will be interesting to to see what they okay, can. Okay, cool. With. Nice to see new groups active on the C64. So that's going to be interesting. Uh, other entries for the C64. This was released at BCC. I believe it was in Germany that the party was held. Let's take a look at other entries that were released. This one was called Bizarro by Atlantis. It has a B. Doesn't have a digger. <laughs> that, that was a joke for Gasman. That's pretty nice. Uh, Yobe, I heard you are planning to learn to code for old school machines as well, not just for the Pico 8. Oh uh, yeah, I've uh, I'm like uh, dipped my toes like really shallow into Z80 assembly, but like I haven't really gone beyond like basic addition so far so i'm probably gonna uh, <laughs> get like more into it after i'm done with re revision and recovered a bit but yeah i'm kind of uh i'm like uh, i really love the pico 8 and i'm probably always gonna do stuff for it but i need to do something else for a change mm -hmm. now and uh, i'm uh, probably some c80 platform probably msx just because of nostalgia reasons and msx was my second computer ever oh you had an msx okay i didn't know yeah. they were that big or famous in uh, finland uh yeah uh particularly spectra video msx's were they were kind of i think uh, the second biggest uh, computer of that era like the next to the c64 so they were they were never a C64 big, but I think they were like the second most popular. Okay, that's interesting to know. So this was Bizarro by Atlantis. We have one more entry from uh, from BCC party before we move on to the next part of our show. And this one is a uh, Snake Pit by Delhi Seed or Delhi Delhi Seed. I don't know. Yesterday is history, tomorrow is a mystery, but today is a gift, that's why it's called present. That didn't really rhyme, but okay. Valley said. Real-time illusions. I think it's more than a one screen. Let me try to skip, yeah. Some copper bars. With a logo on top. Oh, it's a snake. That's not bad. At least the graphics are pretty decent. And the music as well. It's nice and cheerful. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I think I've seen this effect before. Greetings. I'm waiting for a killer screen. This one isn't terrible. It's not really good either, though. Thanks for the sub, Helmut and Essen. Okay, let's move on to the next part of our show, which is uh, chatting with Yobe, I guess, and talking about uh, some of his older entries. Because nowadays you are a coder, apparently, but you start in the demo scene as a musician. Yeah, that's my background, really. So hmm. I've been... Uh, like I, um, I started learning uh, tracking in somewhere around 91, 92. I didn't really... Uh, I didn't really have any like uh, visual talent, uh, at least I didn't think I had any back then, and I really couldn't understand like any code beyond basic 
but uh, I mm -hmm. kind of just uh, randomly got a tra tracker somewhere and just went with it and had a lot of fun and uh, just been having fun ever since. Um, I, I I heard, uh, I don't know if I, it was on a post of yours or on Facebook or something, that you were a bit disappointed for, of, of doing music for demos, and that's what was one of the reasons why I started programming for the Pico 8. Yeah, because yeah, uh, I got the Pico 8 license uh, to do demo soundtracks for other demos, but those demos never really materialized, <laughs> so I just decided, okay, I have this license, it's Lua, how hard can it be? And <laughs> actually, then turn us, turns out if you don't know anything, it, it still is pretty hard, but I managed to get something done. Uh, what can you tell us about this demo, though? Rapid eye movement from Matt Current. Was this one of the yeah. first demos you were involved with? Or? Uh, this, uh, yeah, I don't... Uh, um, this is, I think, the first Matt Current PC demo that I was involved with. I was mm -hmm. involved with like our GBA and other stuff, but this is like, actually, I think this is probably the only Matt Current PC demo that I've done a soundtrack for. Hmm. And it's, I kind of have a, a dualistic uh, relationship with this soundtrack because I think it's uh, one of the best pieces of music I've written and one of the worst pieces of music I've produced. But uh, it's kind of, I'm. Why do you think it's badly produced? It sounds good to me. And it's, it, it's kind of like, a, sounds like a mess and sounds like it's not really like powerful in the ways it's supposed to and kind of thin where it's not supposed to. But I have managed to get, like, hmm. uh, managed to reach the right kind of mood with the melody. So I, I'm really proud of this composition. So maybe I'll okay. revisit it someday. Yeah, would be nice to see a, a, a remaster of it, maybe. Yeah, maybe maybe I can persuade John 9 to do something with the visuals as well. <laughs> uh, okay, so let's move on to another demo. You were also involved with Youth Uprising at some point. You did the soundtrack for Wolfram Theta, apparently. Yeah, this is probably the only 64K done in 2013 with a traditional tracker module as a soundtrack, because who does that anymore? <laughs> but... But yeah, uh, Waffle asked me for a soundtrack, and he described this concept, this concept that he had, and I thought that this kind of like minimalist, uh, really repetitive kind of stuff would fit it, and I think it turned out quite well. Mm -hmm. It's mostly about mathematics stuff, because I I really yeah. love the point where you like show that the mathematics, what the mathematics yeah. can do, the different. Uh, so that that was the highlight of the demo for me that was the the biggest uh, positive point of it yeah it's uh yeah i, I like the uh, minimalist style and yeah and it's a nice touch to have the actual formulas on the screen so yeah mm -hmm. I, i'm proud of having taken part in this production yeah, because the main problem when you're starting to learn uh, mathematics is that it all feels too abstract, and when you actually visualize it, it, it becomes yeah. becomes uh, it, it starts to have more meaning. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Seems that we lost Gasman. Hope he comes back relatively soon. And meanwhile, we have another demo from uh, Yobe. Oh yeah, this one. I really, I really, I really love the sync on this one. Yeah, this is uh, actually the. Uh first time that the tool that became new rocket was used as far as i know hmm. yeah this is uh this was basically a scrabble wanted to do some like some insane sync stuffs and he had this tool that he wanted to try and this is the result and yeah it was praised for its sinks back then and it is the sinks are still quite like top notch to this day i think wasn't this done as a, as a, a, at a party? Wasn't this a party made? Uh, at least largely, yeah. I think I uh, Scrabble showed me his sync system at uh, Breakpoint some year. I don't remember, 2004 or something. And yeah, uh, he was still working on it. So I, I'm, I'm not, I don't know how much of it he did at the party place, but a lot at least. 
Uh, I think the guys for you watching at the stream, this is it, it's a little bit out of sync because of the difference between the sound and the video here on my setup because I'm using a different instance to control the sound and sometimes it lags up. So if you think it's not perfectly synced, you are wrong. It is perfectly synced. It it's is. just the stream fucking with you. Impeccably synced. Impeccably. Uh, let's move on to another entry. This one, I, I remember this one got was very big. It was, uh, I think it was like fifth place at the assembly or something like that. And you had a very strong political opinion to give. You gave like this huge political speech when you went to, to on stage. Uh, that was actually a Jumalauta demo. That was uh, Buick, I think. Really? But, it wasn't this one? Yeah. I thought it was Rat. No, it, uh, it was Buick, and but I I can see why you would uh, think it was this because because well it's got words by me but yeah that was <laughs> that was Buick and that was uh, basically there were like uh, I don't remember which group it was Dart or something that got on stage to pick up their prize and they had like ten members and then we had this idea we're gonna get all of Jumalauta on stage. <laughs> And, uh, well, we could only fit, like, maybe 30 people before the <laughs> organizers said, okay, stop it, this platform can't hold any more people. <laughs> and then I then I had this uh, weird rant written by Sauli that I just shouted on the mic. I don't <laughs> even remember what it was about. <laughs> okay, well, good times. <laughs> uh, scare, scary enough, uh, a certain person who I shall not name now, the, oh, afterwards came to tell me that he agreed with us, with what I said. <laughs> <laughs> Which is pretty frightening. <laughs> uh, anyways, moving on, uh, you started doing stuff for the Pico 8, and the first... I think it was the first release that you did for the Pico 8 was this one, Rock for Metal. Rock for Metal, yeah. How how did you come up with uh, the concept? Like, I guess you obviously like metal or rock. I like metal and I uh, particularly I like uh, tra traditional heavy metal and like uh, this uh, traditional power metal kind of. I, d I don't like uh, like Manila Road and stuff like mm -hmm. that. And I was kind of like juggling. I, I knew that I wanted to do a demo for the Jumalauta party and I was just juggling ideas. And then I then this uh, soundtrack uh, started coming along and then it just hit me. Okay, yeah, this is obviously what it's going to be. We're just and trying different uh, sounds on the, on the Pico 8, just trying to come up with a random soundtrack that then you would make a demo all yeah. around. Yeah, I mean, uh, it just, uh, yeah, I just was doing melodies and then it uh, just uh, uh, randomly I decided to do a metal riff and uh, then it just, <laughs> then it just, like, it was obvious the direction after that because. I love, um, I love how you have the lyrics there, even though you don't have anyone singing, you only have the melody behind it, but you really have the lyrics there, so you c people can actually do karaoke versions of this. Yeah, uh, Raimo of Mad Current uh, or Unique nowadays actually asked me that I should make a version of this demo where the texts come a bit, uh, bit before. Yeah, so you have time so to... be a better karaoke version. But yeah. yeah we were we actually, at the prize giving at the Jumalauta party, we had a crowd singing along to this. <laughs> I think someone has a video of it. I don't know where the video is. Yeah. Maybe, maybe if we if we print lyrics on a piece of sheet, uh, a piece of shit, <laughs> a piece of <laughs> a piece of sh a sheet of paper, we can yeah. actually uh, uh, sing it while we watch it, like on time. To, without to having yeah. to like the, the previous, but it would be nice to have like maybe in a future Yumalauta party that uh, you have like a special competition to sing along the demo, see who who can oh. sing along better. So okay. yeah, we could have a tip. demo karaoke with like all the different demos that have lyrics, like 303 and this <laughs> one, and uh, I'm this sure one, there are others. This one has clearly more lyrics than your usual demo has. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I just... Uh, guess, uh, I just realized when I was doing that, that this needs to have... This can't just be a melody. I need to have the lyrics for this because I need... Because I yeah, really real rock to ex has express lyrics. the feeling yeah. of like... 
that's really like powerful and kind of like uh, simultaneously tongue and cheek, but still simultaneously serious, mm-hmm. like heavy metal kind of feeling. If you yeah, get it, my it drift. works very well. I mean, because the platform obviously has its limitations, so you yeah. don't take it very seriously. But then all the references to true hardcore metal are so strong yeah. that it really, really comes across. And it's a, re- it's a great demo. It's one of my favorites. Uh, yeah, well, definitely you. my favorite on the Pico 8, but one of my favorites overall of, of, of the year. So uh, oh, okay. very well done on that one. H- how hard was it to do the 3D stuff on the Pico 8? Uh, that was actually the f- uh, first thing that I coded, and I had no idea about 3D math beforehand. But, but I fortunately found a, a pretty simple, simple explanation how to. Uh, I think the 8-bit how, guys how, how did a, like a, a, did a write-up. From, project pixels from 3D space to 2D space, hmm. and so it was. Yeah, it was uh, kind of challenging with, with never having done like any graphics coding before, but. I got it done. It's kind of messy and I need to rework it someday, but yeah. I, I think the 8-bit guys did like a write-up on how to do some 3D stuff. Did you use any of that at all or was that... Uh... Uh, no, I used a, a guide by a fellow whose name is Mateus Mortati or something like that, hmm. which is uh, uh, a description of like basic uh, uh, 3D math and then I think it was uh, focused on Pico 8 specifically. Okay, yeah. cool. Uh, what about this demo that we're watching now? What can you tell us about? It was obviously called Purgatorium. It's by yeah. Quad Trip and Ivory Labs and Yuma Lauta. Yeah, Visu asked me for some black metal and I made some black metal. And <laughs> that's, that's... That's pretty much it. it. <laughs> yeah, it's like... Uh, there, are, there have been metal demos in the past, but I can't name really very many black metal demos. I can name uh, Matka Alamalma by KSM and I can name this. Th- th- these are the only two black metal demos that I'm aware of. Mm-hmm. And I think they were going for something that uh, kind of like looks like it's straight from some 14 uh, year old uh, uh, Cradle of Filth slash Dimu Borger <laughs> fans mind but but, but with kind of like also this atmospheric, like this scene. So it's not just like uh, upside down crosses. It it's mm-hmm. also conveys kind of like also the atmospheric side of black metal, which is a good idea, I think. I, I didn't see any churches burning, so I was a bit disappointed in that regard. Yeah. I, so I always associate black metal with churches burning because, <laughs> well, because yeah. of reasons. Yeah, it's... Uh, <laughs> Quite, kind of a big part of it, the whole, <laughs> whole thing. Yeah. Uh, anyways, this was an instancy demo party. Yeah. Got fourth place. Uh, can you tell us something about the party? Were you there? Yeah, I was there. It, uh, it's a annual party in Jyväskylä, Finland. It's actually, ironically, considering the previous demo, it was held at a Christian school. <laughs> <laughs> And I think it's perfect the, uh, setting for a black metal demo. Uh, and I think it's the it's the only demo party in Finland right now that's been organized at a school. Probably because it's the only school in Finland that still hasn't basically banned the whole demo scene. You know? But mm. uh, yeah, but it's kind of it's kind of different. Uh, it has a different atmosphere. It's kind of like a scene party for people who really aren't that much in the demo scene but in a good way it's a refresh refreshing you meet a different kind of mm. crowd like a local uh, computer science uh, students and things like that and okay. uh, they unfortunately don't allow alcohol at the party place but that's not a big problem because there's a very good pub right across the street so <laughs> yeah definitely i i had heard a lot of good things about the party from Waffle and everyone else who had gone there for years and this was my first time there this year. I had a lot of fun there. It was very much a different experience than your usual demo party and I'm probably gonna go there next year as well. Okay, so the demo that we're currently currently watching is Viva 2, got third place at at Instancy as well. Now we're gonna play the second demo. 
It has a second part there, but I skipped it, unfortunately. So, The Art of Instancing by Instancy Lollies 2019. I don't know. Let's see if it's any good. Do you actually remember the demo combo? Uh, yeah, I, re I remember this demo. It's I, it's I like the shader things. I it's like everything looks slick and smooth, and it's kind of <laughs> you you see a lot of you see a lot of stuff at Instancy where it's clear that uh, they're not re from the design that they're not really seasoned demo scenarists, but there's a lot of spirit and a lot of yeah. original ideas behind everything. And uh, some of this stuff does have uh, like really like a solid technical productions, like production, like this one. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> I love the soundtrack. Yeah. <laughs> yeah <there's> <laughs> Yeah, good music. Yeah. It's not what you usually have in the demo scene, but I like that fact. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> if I remember correctly, the guy who coded this demo is actually uh, teaching computer science at the Uvascular University, if I... Okay. Yeah. It's, it's been fun, funny. You have the uh, this uh, professor there, like uh, teachers versus students. It, yeah, you have the professor there with the students and uh, like boozing at the bar with the students and <laughs> basically just like anyone else. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty cool. Yeah. yeah. It's nice that they have like this uh, local. Local demo scene there in Uvasco. Yeah. I mean, Uvasco yeah, is in the middle of nowhere. Well, it could be worse. I mean, it could be yeah, further well, up it north. Is, it is. It is still an like active student town, student mm -hmm. city. So it's kind of like a vibrant city, but it's still like far from Tampere or Helsinki or places like that. Mm -hmm. Okay. And this was your demo. Uh, yeah, this was my demo. Mostly uh, about techno. Correct me Most if I'm wrong. This is about techno and about uh, techno utopianism. This is uh, basically like my not so subtle uh, flipping of the bird to people who basically have this uh, blue eyed view that the technology in itself without regulation will save everything. I'm technology sorry, will sorry, make sorry. everything better. Yeah, sorry, I'm a cynical old fart, but... <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's perfectly fine. Yeah. But, but yeah, like, climate warming. Uh, uh, like, the problem we have with the climate right now, and uh, people just say, okay, but don't worry about it, because in 10 years, some new technology will come along, and it, it will fix yeah. that for you, automatically. Yeah, but, like, I mean, I think I like... Uh, of course, uh, technology has the potential to make everything better, but there's really, presently, there's not, like, in, uh, from the p point of view of, like, uh, uh, raw and uh, unfettered capitalism, there's not really much of an incentive to mm -hmm. save the world. So it's yeah. not just gonna happen automatically. It needs to. It, it needs will. It needs something to push it, and uh, that's what some people are, I think, missing. The main problem with capitalism is that it doesn't. It doesn't support people. Doesn't support ideas like the basic income that everyone should just yeah. have a basic income and not have to worry about what they're going to do for food the next month or what they're going to do for home in the next month. And yeah. while you're dealing with those issues, you strive to get more money to become more powerful instead of striving to make a better world overall. The, yeah, making the better world becomes a byproduct of you getting money and not the main aim. Yeah, and even uh, like. I believe that uh, something like Google, I, I think it started from a like an yeah, idealistic do no standpoint. 
I have this feeling, but uh, like then they started getting money and then they started realizing that they can uh, get as much money by like selling censorship solution to China and things like that. So it's, it's a big mess. Yeah. Uh, anyways, that was the winner demo of Instancy. Uh, next up, we have a few demos from another demo party, which I believe it's Fjol Data, because it was from Sweden. So we have to speak like this, otherwise they will not understand us. Uh, this one is... what is the name of this one? OMG Got Balls. So someone got some balls, apparently. And it got third place. It's by OMG, apparently. And it features some balls, apparently. So, uh, long, long question in the demo scene. Do you prefer balls or do you prefer cubes? It's a question for everyone. Feel free to answer. <laughs> made of balls. Balls making cubes? Like cubes made of balls? Taurus. Taurus is nice too. <laughs> Taurus, technically speaking, is neither a cube nor a ball. So, uh... I like so... <laughs> uh yeah. My 3D code draws maybe 80 triangles, if they're really small triangles. So yeah, I'm gonna have to go with cubes. <laughs> Gasman, what about you? Um... <laughs> well, yeah, if it's... Um... Trying to think of doing the whole bit of 128 byte intro stuff and which ones the it's a, I think I've done yeah 128 byte intros with balls so it's uh, yeah <laughs> uh, old uh, old faithful yeah <laughs> uh, they they aren't really easier to render though you need you need more dots no. yeah it's, I suppose yeah it's if you're uh, well depends on rendering methods uh, <laughs> depends on rendering uh, methods yeah it's uh, <laughs> Yeah, evil tricks are always uh, the way forward in the demo scene. All right, so let's move on to the next demo. The next demo is called Monomania, and it's by Offense. This one got second place at Fuel Data. Uh, let's see what it's about. Probably not as many balls as the previous demo. More arrows, apparently. Picture the typical C64 color palette. Hey, evil in the chat is saying if balls touch, well, <laughs> you know, if balls touch, then it's gay. It's Has to be gay. Elmo is also in favor of balls. He's, uh, he did a spinning ball in 64 bytes. I guess he's winning you, guys, man. Vertical scrollers. Wavy vertical scrollers. With different colors. Yeah, that's one way to make a scroller unreadable. Have like 700 of them. <laughs> It has been done before. Okay, I'm gonna skip a little bit this part. See if there's anything interesting. We're missing a C64 expert to tell us all about the dirty tricks that they are using here. Twisty scroll. Yeah. Feels like every self-praising old-school demo needs a proper uh, twister. Maybe some animation here. Yeah, it looks like the lighting looks too fake. I didn't even understand what that was supposed to be. This looks nice. Ooh, yeah.
Okay, so let's move on to the winner demo of Yoel Data before we head up for some specky stuff. This one is called Space Beer. It's by Fossil. Oh, Arkbank. It has a scroller. Ooh. Vertical scroller. Ooh. Well, fake vertical scroller, I guess. It's just rotated. Oh my god, that's another way to make scrollers unreadable. <laughs> yeah, the sound's pretty good though. Yeah. Good sync as well. Yeah, I mean, I like the design. There's not much going on, but everything just feels feels well thought out and this mm -hmm. yeah all these syncs with the text yeah it's very slick yeah <laughs> nice graphics i guess this one was by arc make we are stratosphere apart okay like how he's, like, the beer is filling his, uh, what's it called, helmet? Space helmet? Yeah. <laughs> Evil is saying that it makes him laugh that the C64 has way better sound than an Atari STF. <laughs> Shots fired. Okay, uh, let's move on to specky stuff. And the first specky demo we have is Bada Boom by uh, Gemba Boys, apparently. Hopefully, he'll be wrong. Uh, this one was released at Forever 2019. Yeah. And it got second place in the compo. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, Gemba Boys, it's, um, it's the Czech Slovak group. It's kind of formed front of all of the, the groups that were around at the time and it's uh, it's kind of i guess it's it's come out of uh, as uh, people have had sort of less free time to work on uh, demos they're kind of pooling their efforts and uh, in fact i got uh, roped into this one so this is uh, my effect with these uh, zooming squares mm -hmm. and uh, and yeah yeah it's, it's it means that yeah there's uh, we, we get sort of a, a, a nice uh, Decently sized uh, demo uh, in the compo, and uh, yeah, it's, it's worked out quite well. And uh, yeah, it's, did it's you been, actually uh, attend the party, Gasman? Yeah, yeah, it's uh, forever. That that well, it was my first ever demo party back in uh, 2000, and I think I've uh, only missed one of them. Uh, so it's uh, that's become a bit of a ritual, and uh, yeah, it's a uh, really mm. enjoyable party. It's kind of a bit like. Uh, Going back in time a bit, still with the uh, paper vote sheets and uh, <laughs> sort of, uh, sort of yeah, the, the chairs in the middle of the hall and everyone intently watching things. To, yeah, <laughs> nice little uh, Deus Ex Machina tribute here. Heard this? Yeah. Yep. Oh, like voxel landscape. Yeah. A bit fake, but okay. Yeah. So yeah, as I say, this this is kind of a, a mass collaboration between sort of all the uh, active, uh, well, most most of the uh, active uh, Czechoslovak sceners and uh, um, so 
Nobby is uh, what, um, one of the, uh, yeah, not to confuse with the other Nobby from uh, Finland, but uh, mm-hmm. is uh, um, yeah, responsible for collecting everything together and uh, he's done a, sort of a great job of, uh, sort of editing everything. And, uh, yeah. I thought the Spectrum Nobby was Russian. Apparently he's not. Uh, no, no, he's, uh, he's Czech. Yeah. Okay. And then on first place, we got this demo from Scoopax, which was yeah. curious because I had never seen Scoopax doing Spectrum yeah. demos before. Well, I think mean, this is kind of a bit of a comeback demo as well. It's, um, it's a few people that I, I kind of... I, I, I know them from the group for Raw Arse, which has been... Uh, well, in theory, that's one of the groups that I'm part of, but they've been uh, kind of uh, inactive, but... Um, yeah, so um, to, um, LA Esquire who did the music and um, Lord Coxis who sort of did um, half of the coding along with uh, Mr. Spiv and uh, yeah, it's, I, I d- don't know how the uh, ScoopX connection came about, but uh, yeah, it's some um, kind of uh, a bit of, surpri- of a surprise to see them uh, sort of reappearing and uh, come up with this kind of pretty. Uh, I think people have said it's Russian style and. Uh, I, I didn't find it Russian style. I thought it was more like old school style than actually yeah, Russian. Yeah, yeah maybe. I, th- I think is the fact there's uh, kind of lots of uh, multicolor effects. I think there was a bit of a trend for that in like the Russian scene around mm. sort of '97 before it uh, gave way to the whole uh, chunky dithering kind of thing. Mm-hmm. But, uh, but yeah, kind of yeah, def- definitely old school is the word. Yeah. And uh, I. Can you tell us how difficult that uh, over the border effect, so when the red was wiping yeah. out, is that easy on Spectrum or is that complicated? Um, well, no, the, well, the thing with the, the Spectrum, whenever you're doing these the multicolor effects, so changing the uh, attribute memory so that you've got more colors than you'd usually get uh, in uh, in each attribute square, um, you've got to do that by so counting cycles. There's, there's not really any subframe timers on the Spectrum, so uh, mm-hmm. everything has to be so precisely timed when you're writing to screen memory so uh so yeah it's uh, pretty intense if you're uh doing that for like for, uh, full screen effect yeah well we i remember there was also a lot of problems like the multicolor effects on the russian clone spectrums yeah. don't quite work well on the the more uh western european spectrums yeah is yeah, it the so other way around like if this demo is played on the russian spectrums now it will look like crap uh, I guess so. Yeah, it's uh, I, well, it's it's possible that they sort of went to the extra effort of uh, detecting and sort of fixing the timings for different platforms. But uh, yeah, that that is uh, well, n- n- knowing um, to how uh, I, I, I guess sort of compatibility compatibility fixes always tend to take a bit of a backseat to uh, yeah, leave it for the final version. But, yeah, pretty much. This one looks so. multicolor as well. Yep, I think this is probably um, does a half-sized attribute, so it's uh, changing the uh, the attributes to halfway down in each uh, attribute cell. So there's uh, a bit of a trick you can do there with the 1 to 8K Spectrum. It has a shadow screen, so you can flip the, between those two screens instantly. But, hmm. uh, again, getting the timing right for that while you're doing a full screen effect is a bit of a challenge. Hmm. Yeah. But it's nice to see new people, well, old people that came yeah. back and do new stuff on the Spectrum. Because yeah, for yeah. a couple of years, it seemed like the only the Russian guys were doing uh, stuff on the Spectrum actively. You yeah. know, it's nice that there seems to be more action again in uh, the Polish yeah. scene, the, the Slovak scene, as you mentioned, and also yeah. the, the UK uh, scene with yeah. you and the guys from 8 bit doing stuff for yeah. Spectrum as well. Yeah. Well, I, I think they, as far as the. I think I, I might be the UK Spectrum scene full stop now. Um, well, e- Evil Paul, who is the main driver for uh, uh, 8-bit on the Spectrum, was uh, he's uh, in Finland now, I believe. So. Uh, oh, really? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So. And that's how the UK scene died. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, no, the UK scene as a whole is uh, very much active. I think we've got uh, possibly a record contingent coming over to revision this week. So. Yeah. And this one is Regression by M. Boric, I believe. And yep. it participated on the Wild demo for yep. reasons that I don't know. Yeah, so th- this is, uh, I believe, it's um, it's for the Spectrum with the uh, MBO2 or MBO3. It uses a disk drive. 
Yeah, it's it's a disk drive with I think there's like DNA um, sort of capabilities built in. So I think that there is sort of a, a bit of uh, hard, hardware enhancement in terms of uh, the processor. I, I'm I'm not that familiar with the details, but um, mm -hmm. but at least I can say that it it is kind of original Spectrum with hardware add-on. We're not talking about sort of FPGA with uh, sort of totally new capabilities mm -hmm. invented, so, uh, yeah. Not a ZX Evolution thing. No, no. It's, it's, uh, so I, th I, th I think it's just, it's like a standard Z80, but with extra sort of memory transfer capabilities there, so... I, and again, I'm, I'm not sure how much of this is uh, animation versus real time, but I think there's uh, mm -hmm. more capabilities for shifting bikes around on screen. So. Okay. That's 3D. Yep. No balls, though. Yep. It did have a cube, but no balls. But yeah, that is uh, a lot smoother than you'd uh, expect from a stock spectrum. Hmm. I'm not really sure what the uh, drama between um, Gemba and, uh, well, Emboric or which is uh, not a, not affiliated with Gemba. So I, I, I don't think it was, it's been sort of a too uh, dramatic, really. I, th I think it's more of a friendly split. They, um, he wasn't uh, that happy with the uh, direction of the of the group, and uh, <laughs> they, they, uh, they, they had how everything was uh, being compiled, put together. Okay, uh, meanwhile, Forever also had an Atari compo, and this was part of the 1K, I believe. Uh, the Atari intro compo. It's called Algorithm, it's by Agenda, and it won the Atari intro compo. Uh, I especially like the glitchy aesthetics that it has. Okay. Yeah, I believe so. Yeah. yeah. That's really nice. Nice style. Music is a bit too low, but it's there. You can hear it. A yeah, nice little intro. Well done, Agenda. And next up we have Brainwaves, 256-byte intro. I'm not sure if this was in Forever or uh, Specky this, PL. Yeah, yeah, this is Specky PL. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, did you attend Specky PL, Gasman? No, not, no, it's, uh, not that. It's time it was uh, crept up on me a bit. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's yeah. not a new effect, but it's well done, and the music fits nicely. So, nice 256-byte intro. Let's see what we have uh, else. We have Erzak, uh, 4K, apparently. And uh, Catman, who did the music for this and has a, a, another very distinctive style. He's another uh, demoscene who feels like he's been around on the spectrum forever. And, uh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's a, it's a very uh, nice, ni nice to hear. It's a, it's a very complete sounding soundtrack for a 4K, mm -hmm. really. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it's good. Huh? So, Exoset, have you ever done graphics for the Spectrum? I did. Yeah, I did a few. I don't think I was using in demo, but I think I, ten years ago I did a few. A few mm. images for Spectrum for some competitions. Okay. And uh, yeah, it's quite a challenge. I mean, the, those blocks constraints are. Is it, uh, is it that different around. from the Atari? Doesn't the Atari have block constraints as well in terms of color Not use? On the ST, no, no, no. Okay, okay. No, no ST is uh, there's no constraint at all. So, Spectrum is yeah, and then the palette is is quite. <laughs> it's, yeah. it's challenging. Oh. Yeah, I, mean, it's, I like it because it's very. It's colors I would never choose if I had the choice, so it's, it's a good challenge <laughs> that you have to work with them. 
Do you do you think the spec Spectrum is more challenging than the C C C sixty four? Which one do you think it's more friendly for the Graphician? I think sixty four is uh, has many more graphic modes, and some of them I think are, are no constraint. Not 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 just constraint, or they're quite quite light on constraints. So I think mm -hmm. sixty four is a lot easier to to draw for. Okay. So this was the winner 4K from uh, Specky PL Demo Party. Then we had the winner at uh, Specky PL was Oxygen 7 by Stardust, which is pretty much a remake of a track by Jean-Michel Jarre with an animated cover of the album. That's just this one effect for the entire six minutes. But well, this is the cover of the actual Jean-Michel Jarre album, so that's why it's meaningful. It's a pretty decent cover. Uh, yeah. The track, I mean. Yeah, and I like that the visuals have like uh, like subtle, subtle like variations and things going on throughout the six minutes. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can see those constraints there in the shoulders of the of the person. Yep. That's the only part that looks a bit weird. Guess it couldn't be helped. Anyways, this doesn't change very much, so we're gonna keep going. They had some stuff for the Sam Coupe as well. Are any of you guys familiar with the Sam Coupe? Gasman? Can try it a little bit. Um, yeah, not I'm not all that familiar with. Um, kind of in the uh, final days of the Spectrum's commercial life, this was kind of uh, pushed as a possible uh, upgrade platform. But I think it, uh, it there, were, there were kind of de delays in it being released, and it ended up being kind of competing against the Amigas, and it kind of like wasn't really enough to uh, to to sway people from that. And, uh, hmm. and I, I, so you I never got one. No, I, I didn't, no, no, but I think, yeah, after, uh, kind of a lot of the kind of post-spectrum, uh, post-commercial life of the spectrum, mm -hmm. when it was like, just living on in fanzines and things before the internet came along, I mm -hmm. think a, a lot of the fanzines were kind of combined spectrum and Sam Coupe. Ah, and, okay. Uh, so it's like it was, considered the same family. Somehow. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm, I'm sure that the, the makers of it would have uh, liked it to be sort of more regarded as a computer in its own right, rather than <laughs> a sort of slightly a fancy spectrum. spectrum. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, how close is it to the spectrum? Because I feel like it was like a spectrum with better graphic mods. Is it, is it more yeah. than that? Uh, yeah, I, th I think th there are. I think there's like four different graphics modes. Um, there's um, well, there's one which is spectrum compatible, and there's some. I think there's a high res one, and uh, and and there's a, a high res high color one as well. But uh, I think what one sort of issue that a lot of programmers had with it, I believe, is that um, the uh, the processor. I think it was a six megahertz Z80, so it, it wasn't really enough of an upgrade on the spectrum to really uh, to. to deal with the extra bytes being pushed around for the for the graphics so uh mm. so I, th I think that there were kind of a lot of it, it never really saw any like, action games that really took advantage of the uh, the graphics modes i think there was a running joke that it, that it only ever got puzzle games and uh, <laughs> Yeah, it's like uh, every review that came along it said well it's a really nice game but it's another puzzle game <laughs> Um, Gasman, I wanted to ask you about the ZX Next. Do you want to talk about the ZX Next? I heard it's uh, about to come out. Uh, yeah, it's, it's, I've been sort of, uh, following the, uh, the, um, the, the Kickstarter update, and uh, yeah, it's been a, a bit of a yeah, it's, it's been a bit delayed uh, uh, trying to get the um, all, all the hardware details right, but uh, but yeah, it sounds like they're they're finally to, it's on the boom straight now. Um, I, I did originally uh, back it, but ended up uh, selling my pledge on. I, I think it's. Um, it, it, I, I sort of uh, turned off it a bit after. I guess it was kind of the, um, the hardware capability 
because they uh, it's because it's like FPGA based. There, uh, they added kind of more and more capabilities and uh, things that just felt like, oh, this seems like a good idea. This will give people uh, the ability to do fancier visuals, but it just felt like that actually it's made not it less spectrum interesting. anymore. Sorry, it does, it feels like it's not spectrum anymore. Yeah, it, it felt like yeah, it's, I think when they started like coming up with new Z80 instructions yeah. for it, it's like I can't really apply the knowledge I have from the Spectrum. This is it's hmm. just kind of learning a new platform. And if I was going to learn a new platform, I'd probably go for something that's that people recognize and it's well established, like, like say the Amiga, but uh, yeah, yeah, kind of like you sure in the end. Okay, so, yeah, I don't know if it's fair enough. Be, yeah, demo. Uh, uptake, uh, but yeah, it's definitely got a uh, following um, among the lots of spectrum fans by the sound of things. Okay, fair enough, fair enough. Anyways, uh, we're reaching the end of our show. Uh, we have a couple more demos. This one included like invitation for uh, for revision. So uh, if you're not planning coming to revision, you should plan to come to revision. I guess all three of you guys are coming to revision. Yeah. I am. So see you guys there. <laughs> and uh, yeah. do you guys have your productions finished? Yeah, yeah. Yet. <laughs> Pretty much. Uh, uh, Zep from Lexalawful just came out with a new version of Pico 8, which kind of broke my demo, so I had to do some last minute stuff. <laughs> but yeah, other than that, yeah, it's been finished for a while now. Okay. Very good. Uh, so uh, let me thank you guys for uh, showing up at, at the show. Thank you guys so much for uh, uh, coming along and giving your hints, your, uh, uh, your eyesight, not eyesight, not insight. What the hell was the word? Insight. Yeah, that's it. Brain is dead. Uh, uh, thank you for the show and uh, for having you guys. Uh, I also wanted to show the, thank the guys from the Patreon. Uh, Garfield, Jeff, uh, John Pop, Pete, El Topo, Fulcrum, Paul Falcão, Get It Westendorf, Dexter, Evil, and Gaspar. Thank you guys so much. Patreon, you help keep the show going. Hope to see you guys that are watching on the chat at Revision. Uh, come say hi, let's have a beer or 12, whatever comes first. And uh, see you then. I have two more intros that I wanted to show before we go. Uh, the first one is not about Revision. It's about text mode in uh, MS-DOS. It's uh, fairly high res by Unchained. And it's rather short, but it was on text mode. And there are not that many people doing text mode stuff for DOS and was released outside of a demo party so I thought we should probably see it I like that it's high res and text mode at the same time so that was interesting just this yeah, effect not, looping not heard, yeah. but uh, the sound is also nice well midi I'd live I'd live maybe you you might be correct yeah sounds more... yeah sounds more like I'd live than uh, midi well, yeah, this one looks pretty slick, so I just wanted to show it for the sake of being a completionist fanboy. And uh, last but not least, I have this uh, masterpiece also for the Pico 8 that was just freshly released by Triple X and, uh, and Teal. <laughs> so if you guys are not planning to come to revision, this uh, demo should definitely convince you to come. So there we go. Venga boy, we are going to revision. So yeah, that's it. Thank you guys for watching this <laughs> live stream. Hope you guys enjoyed. See you next time. I don't know where the next uh, show will be planned. Probably something like one month from now. So uh, see you then. Uh, hope to guys. Hope to see you, all of you at revision. So uh, bye bye everyone. Take care. See you Take next care. time. See you soon.